So good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this webinar, which is being organized by the Department of Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics at the University of Malta. For your information, this meeting is being recorded because it will be uploaded later on on our, on our website, on the departmental website. But of course, uh, for GDPR, your details, the details of the attendees, uh, of course, will not be shared. Uh, please feel free to note any questions in the Q&A. We, I hope we're all familiar with Zoom, so you can find the Q&A button. So please don't hesitate to put in any questions as we go along. To introduce myself, I'm Professor Jan Mifsud. I'm a member of the department. Together with me this evening, there is Professor Anthony Fanek, who is the head of the department. And you'll be hearing from him more sh uh, shortly about the Bachelor of Pharmacology course. There is also Professor Maria Cordina, uh, who was also a member of the department and coordinates the WHO Collaborating Center we'll be here, here about as well. Uh, there is also Dr. Vanessa Petroni-Magri, who is uh, also a member of the department, Dr. Lorna Marie West, uh, and Mr. Mark Lawrence Amit. Together, it's our pleasure to have also with us this evening Mr. Alex Campbell, who will be one of our guest lecturers in the Masters in Pharmacology course. And we also have three students with us who will share their experience of these two courses. So Emily and Maya are now uh, soon to be second year Bachelor of Pharmacology student. And Melina is uh, also soon to be second year Masters in Pharmacotoxicology student. So to start, what I will do, and you can see my, my shared screen, I hope please, my colleagues, please let me know. I'm going to give you an overview of what we're going to do today. So, um, as you can see, this is who we are. Can you still see my slides? Can my colleagues please confirm? And first of all, who is the department? I've already explained uh, some of the members of the department, which is not a big department. We're, we're quite relatively small. We don't, we're not a mega department, um, but we have, we're, I, I, I think we have good relations between us as well and work very closely together. So you've met uh, practically everybody here. And there's also Professor Roger Olun Mikhalev, who is, oh, sorry, apologies, who is also a Rector Emeritus, who's a member of the department. And then there are Ms. Ms. Vetlana Toma and Ms. Marguerite Rogers, who are administrative staff, together with Mr. Anthony Buttigieg and Ms. Ker Ms. Mirka Pereira, who are the technical staff who help us out with the laboratories and all the um, lab equipment and all the analytical stuff which goes on in the department. So first of all, um, what, who is the Department of Pharmacology? And I think the easiest is, of course, always to go to the website of the university. Um, it's very easy. If even if you just go to the University of Malta website, you end up in u.mt, you put in pharmacology, and here you will have all the details of the department. So if you can click, you will see, for example, here, studying with us, uh, what we do. It's a bit slow, unfortunately. There are some problems today with the University of Malta website. So this, for example, is a QA day session from last year. And here there are more details about the courses. There is also some information on the research, which is carried out in the department. We'll hear more of that um, later. Um, and this is, of course, especially relevant for our Bachelor of Pharmacology students, but also for the master's students. And here you have a list of some uh, projects we have ongoing together with colleagues, collaborators, both national and international, okay? Um, so there's lots of information about the department, which you can browse. It's, this is the, is the website. Um, and as I said, you can give a, an overview of our research um, by looking, even looking through our profiles, clicking on our names, University of Malta website, you can see what research we are involved in. Um, so as an introduction, uh, I would like now to pass over to Professor Mario Cordina, who will give us some information on the WHO Collaborating Center. Maria. Thank you. Um, as Janet said, I'm head of WHO Collaborating Center, which is the department. Uh, WHO has recognized our efforts in uh, teaching and research of clinical pharmacology and therapeutics and has designated us a collaborating center. I'm happy to say that we have recently been renewed because when you are designated, it is not for life. It is for a period and then you have to show the work that you have done in supporting uh, WHO. 
What we do is um, the areas that we are asked is to provide evidence as requested by WHO on uh, educating healthcare professionals since our department is particularly special in that it not now it has with the uh, pharmacotoxicology and the BSc in pharmacology, we have our own students. Prior, and we still do, obviously, have um, a number we teach pharmacology to practically all students um, who, need who need pharmacology studying at, students studying at university. So that gives us a unique insight into the different healthcare professionals' needs, educational needs across the board. So we contribute to what they ask us. Another thing, we look at medication safety issues uh, for WHO, and we are called upon to support with uh, both position papers and, and, and policy briefs. An interesting thing we are looking at at the moment is um, we are looking at digitalization. Digitalization of education, frameworks for digitalization of health education. There seems to be some misunderstanding that this is simply uh, giving lectures online. It is by far more complex. Um, it is an honor for us, an honor we don't take lightly. And as a team, as a group, we work towards supporting WHO in this mission. Sometimes we are called upon to go on missions to other countries to be able to advise and support all uh, the member states. Um, we, have, we are given small projects sometimes to do, and we always encourage students who are interested in this type of work. This is all voluntary, I must admit. We don't get paid for this work. It is the honor that we have in being designated uh, WHO collaborating center. That means we are of a certain standard and we are recognized by such a leading international body. Um, I think I will stop here, um, uh, Professor Mesut. I don't know if you wanted me to address anything else. I think it was a good overview. In fact, you reminded me, I forgot to say that as a department, even though we're a small department, we actually lecture to, over, to students in about 30 different courses over five different faculties. So it's not just um, our own students we'll be discussing today, but we also lecture pharmacy students, medical students, dental, nursing, midwives, basically all healthcare professionals, psychology, both undergraduate and masters, um, even criminology students, and, and even psychology students. So we range, we lecture a huge range of lectures. Podiatry, occupational health. Podiatry, midwifery, <laughs> occupational health, etc., etc. Just about so, everyone. Exactly, but yeah. it, it gives us um, the positive, the plus sign is, is, as I said, that it gives us a very, very unique insight into all the other the needs and of all the other healthcare professionals and also identifying issues with another thing from WHO we need to work on uh, medication safety issues as seen uh, to the eyes of all these other professionals. So um, this is a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us. Thank you very much Professor Cardina. I will now stop sharing and hand over now to Professor Fennec who will give an overview. I'm sure many of you are wondering, but what is this strange term pharmacology and how does it differ perhaps from pharmacy or all the other pharma sounding words? So I'll leave over to Professor Fennec to introduce the subject and give an overview of the BSc in pharmacology. Professor Fennec. Hello and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Mifsud. So, okay, so um, at the moment I'm uh, I, I head the, the pharmacology department, um, but uh, our department has been working as a team since its inception. So uh, we really don't, um, we, we work as a very good team together. And over the last couple of years, we developed uh, two new courses, one of which is this PSC pharmacology course I want to talk about, which was first launched last October. Okay, first very successfully launched last October. Um, so what about, what is this pharmacology? So first of all, pharmacology refers to the... Professor Fennec, we're not seeing our second, ah, there it is, okay. Okay, uh, okay so this is a summary of the, the uh, members of our department. You have already seen this in, 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 in the previous slide. So if I had to talk a bit about pharmacology, pharmacology is the study of medicines, not just the study of the way medicines are used or the way medicines are prescribed, but also the study of the way medicines are developed. 
the way medicines are work, the way different medicines can be used together, the way different medicines should not be used together, um, the way medicines interact with our cells, the way they interact with our DNA, um, the, the actual manufacturing process of medicines, the quality control of medicines, how those medicines are regulated. Um, the whole area of which has to do with medicines development, use and applications um, from the laboratory initial molecular, you know, um, exciting experiments to the actual clinical use of those medicines on patients, the whole branch falls under the term of pharmacology. So the BSc in pharmacology is a science course, it's a science degree, which provides training in this whole area, in the, in the whole area of pharmacology from development stage to clinical application stage. Um, this whole broad um, air spectrum includes different components. Um, there are components which are um, very laboratory based. Um, uh, there are components which are uh, clinical based, which means basically how, do med how should medicines be used in particular diseases. There are components which are IT based. So in, in, in part of the course, um, uh, also part of the course also includes um, looking at um, uh, software based ways of modeling, for example, the way drugs work, the way um, medicines work, and um, uh, will also be introducing, it's part of the curriculum actually at, at, at a later stage and third year, a very new area uh, called digital therapeutics. And uh, we've been informed uh, when we launched this course last year that we're probably one of the very first universities in, the, uh, in Europe who are actually including digital therapeutics as part, as an integral part of a curriculum. Um, so, uh, when we talk of medicines, medicines have changed dramatically. Okay, um, uh, 100 years ago, we used to use what we very often call crude medicines, very often extracts from plants, trees, whatever. Um, along the years, we started modifying those, seeing what the active ingredients were, modifying the structures, doing you know, chemical synthesis. And that's where most of the medicines uh, we are today. But now we're also looking at personalized medicines. Now there's a whole new area where um, medicines are being designed or used or applied um, specifically to certain patients according to um, genetic um, features or genetic characteristics of those patients. Um, there's a whole area of personalized medicines which uh, will also be addressed in, in, in this course. So basically, what is a pharmacologist? A pharmacologist is a scientist, okay? So at the core, a pharmacologist is a scientist. The BSc, it's a Bachelor of Science uh, with a specialization in pharmacology. And it's a scientist who's involved in several different aspects of medicines, okay? In their development, in the biotechnology, we have medicines which are um, biotechnological marvels. They're, they're, they're not just common chemicals. There are uh, medicines which we're using today, which involve a lot of um, uh, recomb what we call recombinant techniques, where actually a lot of DNA and protein work done at a um, laboratory level. Um, uh, pharmacologists are experts in, in, in the way drugs work, in the way drugs interact with different parts of the body, in the way drugs act with different, interact with different parts of the cell. I'm using the word drug. I want to make this distinction because Drugs and medicines are two terms which are sometimes uh, confused. Um, in pharmacology, we talk a lot about drugs because we're normally looking at the actual active products, at the actual the active ingredients inside the medicine. The medicine itself is the product which you buy off the shelf or, or, or from a pharmacy. It's, it's the complete product. 
uh, which doesn't only contain the drug, okay? It contains other things in there. So what you actually use at home is a medicine, but what we actually study is the drug inside that med medicine or, 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 or medicinal preparation. So with pharmacology, we talk a lot about drugs, at least in, 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 uh, when you go to clinical pharmacology, then we talk a lot about medicines. Um, uh, so pharmacologist is an expert in various aspects of drugs, the way they are incorporated into medicines, the way they work, the way they are used, the way they are developed. Um, pharmacologists are scientists and uh, they, uh, they find uh, their places, they're, they're, they're most re um, required in pharmaceutical manufacturing industries, which is where um, uh, preparation and uh, manufacturing of medicines takes place, various analytical laboratories, uh, quality control laboratories, DNA laboratories, uh, medical representation, so um, basically um, explaining uh, new drugs and uh, new medicines to um, uh, prescribers, uh, pharmaceutical importers, medicine formation sectors, research and academia, these are just a few of the areas where, um, where pharmacologists work. We have developed this course in conjunction with the British Pharmacological Society, which is one of the major pharmacology societies in Europe. Um, I recommend that you do go to the Pharmacology Society website, um, and there is a lot of information about where pharmacology can take you and what you can do with a degree in pharmacology. Um, our curriculum is based on the recommendations of the British Pharmacological Society, okay, and, and, and we've received um, a very, very good um, uh, report from external reviewers on the whole structure of the, of the three-year curriculum. So this is a three-year course. It's built into layers. Um, the first layer will be an introduction to all the sort of basic information and tools which you need. So it's, we call it a basic year. The second year is an intermediate year um, where one learns to apply that which was learned in the first year. And the third year is an advanced, what you call an advanced year where the intermediate and basic years are put into a um, more real life perspective. Um, the way the years the curriculum was built up was that there is an intentional degree of repetition of core material. So there are some things which you will keep on hearing first year, second year, and third year. And those are core things which sort of we keep wanting to know. So we tried to minimize as much as possible it's sort of the fragmentation that, okay, now we did one study unit, now we focus on about it. If there was something important in that study unit, we'll talk here about it again. Um, uh, the course is structured, obviously, with some formal lectures, uh, but there are a number of discussions where students prepare discussions on particular topics and present them to students in a moderated environment. And there is also a fair amount of hands-on research, laboratory research, which actually will start in second year. So um, in second year and, and third year, there is a fair amount of um, laboratory hands-on techniques. What I want to emphasize is that the skills that you learn in this course are transferable skills, which means transferable skills are skills which can be used in other areas. The skills we use, the lab skills we use in pharmacology are similar lab skills or, or other lab skills which can be uh, also used with some modification, obviously, in other science areas. Okay, if you learn how to analyze DNA, if you learn how to culture cells, if you learn how to um, generate proteins from, uh, um, from E. coli, um, that has relevance to pharmacology, but it can also be used in other, uh, in other science, scientific areas. So we have focused on um, providing as many transferable skills as possible. So this is just very briefly, but there are more details online and I'm going to go through these slides. The, 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 the focus of the first year, which is a general overview of medicines, drugs, how they interact, how they work, okay? Um, with with uh, and, and the issues of DNA and medicines, how medicines can affect DNA or how DNA can affect medicines. 
Uh, and second year um, uh, is a bit more, there's a larger clinical input. So how do medicines work in particular diseases? How they are, are they used in particular diseases? How do you analyze drugs and body fluids, for example? How do you quality control drugs? How do you use drugs? What's, what's rational drug use? Um, and in second year, we start introducing um, some advanced topics such as biotechnology, biological drugs, vaccines, and gene therapy. These are the, the sort of high-tech products which are medicines, but they're a completely different uh, group of medicines and the conventional chemical products of humans. Okay? These biological drugs, for example, most of them are antibodies. If you, you, you're familiar with antibodies, probably from, from sixth form. We use antibodies therapeutically um, as medicines. There are uh, vaccines, okay, you've heard loads of vaccines, about vaccines at the least the COVID thing, and uh, we have different types of vaccines, so we'll be introducing those as well, and gene therapy as well. And in third year, um, uh, we go into drug toxicology, we go to digital therapeutics, which is a very new area, uh, which actually looks at uh, the use of the digital tools as therapeutic aids, okay? There are digital tools which have been approved by um, regulatory authorities as being uh, suitable as um, therapeutic aids in certain diseases, okay? We're not talking about tablets here, we're talking about digital tools. Uh, we go into a bit of computational drug design, we have some practical sessions on that, on bioinformatics, which is the um, IT behind um, uh, most of the way that drugs work in a cellular environment, and you also will get um, ethical issues. Uh, you'll also have uh, a dissertation, okay, uh, which will be guided. So um, there will be a supervisor or two supervisors, depending on the topic, appointed, and you will be given time to develop a dissertation um, uh, together with your supervisors. And uh, that will involve uh, either laboratory-based uh, experiments or it can involve non-laboratory-based experiments such as um, analysis of patient data, uh, interviews with patients. Um, so there are a number of options where, which, we, which can be taken on as a dissertation. Um, uh, the the uh, summit, so, so the, the course, we've tried to make the course as much as possible uh, broad in terms of skills, but focused in terms of pharmacology. Okay, so uh, if you're learning about computer-aided drug design, for example, and there are some sessions which are actually hands-on sessions using some software, um, that computer-aided drug design can also contribute, you know, to, to it's also a transferable skill to other, to other science areas. Um, the course has approved, has got, um, three endpoints approved. So if you do the three years, you graduate with a BSc in pharmacology. If for any reason, after year one, after having finished year one, you don't want to or can't, or for whatever reason, cannot finish, cannot go to year two, as long as you've passed all the study units and, and done everything you had to do in year one, then you can graduate with a diploma in pharmacology. Okay, and if the same thing happens after year two, then you can graduate with a higher diploma in pharmacology. Okay, you can't graduate with a diploma in pharmacology and then go back to year two. So if you do that, then your original diploma is invalidated. Okay, so you can't get a diploma, higher diploma, and the BSc <laughs> from, from, from the course. It, it, it's, it's always the highest one you can get. Um, if you get, if once you finish the BSc, you can also use that degree, it's been approved as eligible qualification for entry into the course of Doctor of Medicine and Surgery. So if you want to enter into medicine um, and you have a BSc in pharmacology, that will make you eligible to apply and enter into medicine. Okay, even if you don't have the MDA level requirements, for example. So uh, uh, the, the, the university has accepted this degree as being eligible for entry into, into medicine. There are a number of opportunities um, for further study. Our own department offers an MSc in pharmacotoxicology, which is an evening course, which is mainly taught with, with, 
and, and, and uh, thought and research, basically, which um, uh, Professor Masut will talk about shortly. We also offer um, MSc in pharmacology degrees by research, which means they only constitute a research project, which can be laboratory based or may not be laboratory based, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and we also offer PhDs in, uh, in pharmacology. Um, uh, the uh, British Pharmacology Society has agreed to offer free membership to our pharmacology students. Okay, so the BPS, British Pharmacology Society, offers free membership, normally offers free membership to BSc pharmacology students in the UK. Um, but they have accepted to also offer free membership to our students here in Malta. So if once you apply and are accepted to the course, um, if you wish to become members of BPS, and there are some advantages because you get some benefits, you can get to um, uh, talk to other student, pharmacology students across the world, you enter into a community, um, uh, you, you can go to conferences basically free of charge, at least in terms of, you still have to pay for flights, but, but the registration is free of charge. Um, it, once, once you're accepted into the course, um, uh, if you're interested, uh, talk to me and I'll tell you what to do and, and uh, you can become a member for as long as you're a student um, for free with the, with the BPS. Um, the entry requirements for the BSc in pharmacology are um, uh, the general entry requirements, normal massive requirements, okay? Um, besides that, you have the special course requirements and they are a pass at advanced matriculation at grade C or better in biology, okay? And you also need a pass at intermediate level in chemistry and one of the other subjects. Now, the university, and I want to emphasize this, will not affect from this coming October, from this entry, so the applications which are being opened now, the university has updated, has increased the options for candidates who do not have all the requirements at time of application. So if you do not, you can, you can uh, I put a reference there to the, to the uh, um, uh, entry regulations. If you do not have, at this point in time, the requirements the, the, uh, for entry into the BSc in pharmacology, okay, um, there are two things you can do. One is go and check the update to the admissions regulations. There are a lot of clauses in there which allow you to apply as a probationary student um, uh, for, for first year during which you may have to do some other um, actually, I, I don't want to go into the details because there's literally one and a half pages of details there. They updated them for this year. Have a look at those. If you have any doubts, um, write to the admissions office or write to me and I will um, forward your request to the admissions office or just apply. If you Once you apply, every application is seen by an admissions board and every application is seen in terms of its eligibility to enter or not, okay? The situation is better than it was last year. Last year, um, you could enter the BSc in pharmacology if you had um, a grade D instead of a grade C in biology. But now there are several other options. So if you have doubt, put in the application, um, uh, that application will go to an admissions board. It will also come to us, okay? And um, we'll evaluate the eligibility of that application. There are a number of options which will allow you to apply. Um, uh, further information, so if you want details on the breakdown of the course, there is that link, which I know you can't remember offhand, but if you go to our website, you can actually go to the, there is a link on our website, which takes you straight to the program of studies. There's a course description, and there's also a course flyer, which is um, on that link, which is basically a summary of the course content. This presentation, this video, this recording is going to be on the website probably by tomorrow, okay? So um, if you want to have a look at these links, you can either sort of take a picture of them now if you want to, while they're on your screen, or you can have a look at the, um, at the presentation tomorrow. 
and uh, um, uh, well, it won't be there tomorrow because site services will need to put it on, on. But anyway, it will be there very, very, very soon. Um, Professor Benegar, I, I, I think in the interest of time, I'll proceed to my presentation of the MSc and then we'll hear the experiences of the students and our colleagues, perhaps. Okay, um, okay, there are two, two uh, uh, BSc pharmacology students with us, uh, Maya and Emily. Um, you, do you want to proceed to the MSc and then we... As you wish, you would you like to say something briefly? Maya, a couple of minutes each, please. Maya, let's start with Maya. Okay, sure. Um, so for me, going into the course, I loved medicine, but I did not want the patient aspect that there was with the doctor of medicine and all the other health sciences courses. When I found this, I wasn't quite sure what it is content-wise, but now after a year into the course, I can say that the content is so varied that even if there's a one particular unit that isn't exactly your cup of tea, there's definitely something in it for you. Um, there's so much personally a particular unit such as regulation of medicines that particularly interested me, the research done behind it and all these interactions, how pharmacotherapy completely works. It's really interesting to find about. Apart from this, um, apart from the academics, me and Emily are working on starting a pharmacology student society. Um, we've just started the works, but we're hoping that by the next scholastic year, um, everything will be up and running and we obviously can accept new members from all the courses that fall under the department and help out and organize as many events as possible. Thank you. Very Emily? Very similarly, um, the course is extremely broad and there is uh, something for everyone. Um, a bit less than a year ago, I was in um, some of the attendees' uh, position. Me and Maya had actually joined the webinar together and we actually watched it um, uh, on the floor of a beach because we had plans with friends. Um, but thank God we did because um, I think I can speak for both of us that we are very happy. Um, personally, in the webinar, uh, the course appeared to tick all the boxes of what I wanted for a university experience. And being here is proof that it has continued to do so. Um, it moves away from the close-minded idea that chemistry and biology A-levels pointed towards becoming a doctor. And it explores so many varied aspects, um, including industrial, molecular, and clinical. And it gives you greater confidence moving forward um, for a career. Um, overall, it is, it is a stepping stone. It's not a point towards an end point, which I love about it because it gives um, an open door to uh, a new world, a very vast scientific world. Um, it's obviously very scary. And in fact, I had um, emailed Professor Fennec before I had applied um, and he had encouraged me to take a leap of faith. And I'm here doing the same to you because I am pretty sure that you will not regret it because not only will you grow academically, but you will find a family in this department like no other at university. Professor Mifsud, may I say just one, yes. one word, please? Yes, Professor Cordina. Um, just to mirror uh, the two students who are presenting the group in first year, I think I speak for all the members of staff when I say that we are extremely happy with our first cohort of students. They were at the beginning shy and hesitant, but over time we, we got to know each other and um, they are a group that are highly enthusiastic and highly interactive. They interact very well with the subject and with us as staff. And we would love to see more of this type of students with us. I'll stop because we're running out of time. Thank you very much, Professor Cordina. If I, uh, in the interest of time, we do have to proceed. I will con continue now briefly about the master's course because I'm aware uh, some of our colleagues will have to leave shortly. So Professor Fennec, if you can stop sharing, I will share my presentation. Professor Fennec, if you can stop sharing, please. 
I am going to stop sharing. So. Thank you. Actually, you can share yours and, and mine will automatically Yes. Stop. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I yeah, trust okay. you can see my presentation. Can you? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So now I'm going to give an overview of the Masters in Pharmacotoxicology course. As Professor Fennec uh, described, with the Bachelor in Pharmacology, it opens a lot of avenues, a lot of doors. We've already had some questions in the chat about this. Um, it's a very much a research-based course. University, our university is not a utilitary university. It doesn't lead to a career, but it leads you to thinking and, uh, you know, to creative skills and leads you to, uh, we need more uh, research as well. And, and one of the aspects which the Bachelor of Pharmacology can lead you to is this Master's of Pharmatoxicology. So what is toxicology? As you can see here, toxicology, of course, very briefly means poison. This is a part-time evening course. And as I said, toxicology is the science of poisons. Everything around us is toxic. Even too much water can kill you, as I tell the students with my first lecture. So what toxicologists do is we study the presence and effects all types of poisons on humans, whether they're medication, drugs, of abuse, animal plants, pesticides. I'm sure some of us already have had some jellyfish bites this summer. So that, of course, is a toxin in itself. And part of the course will be actually looking at these types of marine toxins, plant toxins, um, insects, reptiles, etc. cetera. Uh, besides, of course, the various toxins we have from household items, uh, the pollution, which was front page of the Times today, the, 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 the roads which are mostly polluted on the island, etc. So what does this, this Masters of Pharmacology lead to? Right now, in fact, Malta is setting up a poison center. And shortly, I will be uh, asking, in fact, Mr. Zamit to describe this, the role of this poison center. Uh, but toxicologists as well work in forensic labs, the pharmaceutical industry and regulatory agencies. And it, what we do is provide an understanding of the main mechanisms of toxicology. To understand how to treat poisons, you have to understand how they work, what is happening when somebody takes a specific poison. So in fact, it's a mix not only of research, but also application. And in fact, we have uh, many of uh, our colleagues as well, even if we work, for example, uh, in the Malta uh, Consumer Affairs Authority. There they have a center where they look, for example, at pesticides and all the chemicals being imported into Malta. Uh, when we look at overdoses being admitted to hospital as well. So there are huge areas, uh, even if you work in the, in the industry, the pharmaceutical industry, other industries, the risk assessment to do with these types of chemical compounds, we are surrounded by these chemical compounds, all involve toxicology. So basically, uh, this is a six semester part-time evening course, so it's already in the evening, um, uh, usually with lectures twice a week. Uh, and what happens is it could be over three years or over two years. So the first two years are mostly lecture-based and the last year is um, the thesis, research dissertation. But if, you, if they wish, the students can apply that the summer semester is also uh, is give, dedicated to their thesis. So in fact, they can finish with their, their course within two calendar years. So who is it eligible to? Basically, anyone who has a first degree, who within their first degree has an element of pharmacology. So those students who have done a Bachelor of Pharmacology, perhaps pharmacy graduates as well who've done quite a bit of pharmacology in their undergraduate course, uh, for example, medics as well. So anyone who has any allied hair science degree, which includes pharmacology, um, at least a second class honors, is eligible to do uh, the course. And we have, in fact, I will now also give over uh, Melina as one of our first group of students who have sci five students right now, um, who is actually a medic working as a nurse here in Malta. Okay. Um, so to pro provide expertise, knowledge, and application needed, it's relevant for various healthcare professionals working in several fields, as I was saying, people working in emergency, accident and emergency, in the casualty department, drug information services, uh, toxicology labs, pharmaceutical chemical industries, or as with the Malta Competition and Consumer Affairs um, Authority. Okay, the course, um, so basically the course is based on what happens with, uh, our courses are all based, are all approved at an international level, have all been vetted, and it's based on what Eurotox, so the European uh, Academy of Toxicology approves. So what we do in these courses, study units, you can read more detail, I won't go into them, actually 
uh, is approved um, is what Eurotox rather um, recommends is included in such courses to make sure it is um, uh, you know on par with EU courses. In the interest of time, because I know he's got um, he's got to leave us shortly, and he's very kind to join us today. I will hand over to Mr. Campbell, who for many years directed a poison center in Birmingham, in the UK, who will be one of our guest lecturers. We're very honored. We have several overseas lecturers in this course. Several of the lectures, in fact, are given by Zoom, a big advantage of COVID, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Zamit and his contacts. And uh, Mr. Campbell will be giving uh, quite a few lectures in this uh, coming year. Mr. Campbell, over to you. If you can unmute yourself, please. Thank you very much, Janet. It's a, a great honor to be um, as part of this webinar um, as, as someone who's spent um, their entire life um, working at, essentially in poison centers and in the field of clinical toxicology. Um, just so you know, in fact, I started life uh, with the BSc in pharmacology and physiology, and I fell into toxicology by accident, um, and I had a fantastic career doing that. So I've spent time in my career working in poison centers, um, which are there are poison centers in most countries. Hopefully, there will soon be one in Malta. Um, and uh, um, these are 24 hour services usually that give advice to medical practitioners and healthcare professionals, and sometimes even veterinarians, um, on how to manage cases of poisoning that are actually um, occurring live at that time. So they cover all the aspects that have been mentioned already. So, pharma drugs, pharmaceuticals, household chemicals, industrial chemicals, plants, snakes insects you name it we do it even weapons chemical weapons obviously there's a lot of toxicology involved in that um, so it's a hugely varied field um, there's a very small international family that does it but it's a very friendly family um, and uh, i can't wait to be um, giving you some of my experience and also occasionally telling you what not to do i suppose <laughs> thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Campbell. I truly appreciate your time this evening. Really, really appreciate it. We look forward to, we've worked with Mr. Campbell, even on, we've had, we've been involved even in some EU projects, actually, um, to do on toxicology. And Mr. Campbell was, in fact, one of our partners. Um, I'll now ask Mr. Zamit to say something shortly about his experience, his many years of experience with toxicology, and then I'll pass over to Melina. Thank you very much, Professor Sood. It's a pleasure to join this webinar. Yes, in fact, adding on, on what you said and also what Alex said, you know, toxicology is a very important field. Um, it's a significant also global public health problem. Um, for example, World Health Organization estimates that, you know, unintentional poisonings cause more than 100,000 deaths um, a year. So that's why, you know, um, this falls also under the um, many projects taking place, even in Malta and also around the world with regards to advancing clinical toxicology. In fact, um, we are currently well advanced in, in setting the first poison center in Malta. And many EU legislations, many also local legislations also um, mention the importance of having poison centers, which have an important role to play also in the implementation of international health regulations. So this is a very important subject. We studied the dark side of medicines. And this also ties in very nicely with what Professor Cordina was saying with regards to the importance of medicine safety. And in fact, also I would like to also to conclude by mentioning the importance of having also a multidisciplinary approach in this. And also we have many international um, lecturers who will um, who are part of this master's program, lecturers from the UK, from Netherlands, from Italy, from Israel, from many different countries. So I, I really encourage um, interested applicants to apply. I'm sure they will. I'm sure that they will find this course very useful in their careers. Thank you very much, Mr. Zamit, and thank you very much, Mr. Zamit. Is the full chrome of this course without him? Surely we will not be where we are today. He's He's been for many years uh, uh, involved in the European um, Academy of Clinical uh, Poison Centers and Toxicology within Europe. He's very much involved and uh, um, definitely he's been a linch linchpin in this area. Uh, I would like now to ask Melina for her um, experience of this first year as a master's student. Just to introduce Melina. Melina is an overseas student. Uh, she comes from Goa, but she, she lives and works here in Malta. Uh, her background is in medicine and uh, she's working actually as a school nurse right now. Melina, what has been your experience of this course? 
Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Mifsud. I want to say I've had a very positive experience. Uh, you know, I'm very glad that I came across this course last year around this time. Uh, this course is very well designed and it's very interesting. Uh, you know, the professors, uh, they are very passionate about the course. Uh, Mr. Mark Zameet, uh, Professor Mipsu, Dr. Petroni Magri, just to name a few who are here today. You know, they are very passionate about their course and they teach you everything from the basics. For somebody like me, that was important because it had been a while since I had a pharmacology course. So they went through all the introduction and then built upon that. Um, and, you know, I'm really, I mean, they're very supportive and guiding through every step of the way and uh, i'm really looking forward to doing the dissertation right now working on the research which is like very interesting and it also helps that it's a part-time evening course because i have a full-time job which then allows me to work around you know my schedule and i mean so i'm really excited i think if you want to advance your career if you're looking to do research, then this is a very good opportunity that you should apply. Thanks very much, Melina. I really appreciate your time. Thank I you. think I'll stop here with respect to the MSc. Uh, I don't know, Professor Fanek, would you like to open to the Q&A now? Or perhaps, uh, I don't know, whether Dr. Vanessa Petroni or Dr. Uh, West would like to say something about the Bachelor in Pharmacology before we hand over to the Q&A, if there are any? Dr. Dr. West also um, has a experience the, the total spectrum. We also look at issues related to medication wastage. And maybe Dr. West wants to say something apart from the clinical aspect, the patient interaction aspect. And yes, and for me this year, it was a pleasure lecturing this, this group because it was the first time I actually had continuity. So I actually beat the students, not just once, but we have time to discuss and we have time to, to from one lecture and another, we have time to even give practical examples. Um, I also try to bring on board the clinical aspect as well sometimes. So, so I try to merge the two. And uh, waste, as Maria Stoes before Dina saying, is, is, is my passion in terms of research. And uh, pharmacology, when it comes to waste, it, it, it's a very important component because waste isn't just domiciliary waste. It can start from any time throughout the whole supply chain. So from manufacturing to actually administration. So it's something which, which we also sometimes discuss as well, even during the lectures, even in terms of manufacturing. So, so it's something which I enjoy. I enjoy discussing a lot with the students. Thank you. Thank you for it. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure if any of our colleagues would like to add something. Um, I think there are some Q and A's. Professor Fennec. Um, there are two Q and A's. Uh, actually, more than two Q and A's. So the uh, there was a Q and A. Um, which asked about career opportunities, but actually this Q&A was posted at the very, very beginning. So I think we answered that question when, when, when um, I was sort of describing the BSc course, this, this Q&A. So I, I, I gather that I answered that question. And um, I also sort of provided some information on the um, uh, BPS uh, website, which provides it, and even on the pharmacology in our own departmental website. Uh, if you go there, there are lists um, of, of uh, um, uh, work-related um, opportunities where a BSc in pharmacology would be an asset. Um, uh, there is... Um, there is another question about there a colleague. There is a question who's... about a colleague who is uh, foreign, from a foreign non-EU country. Yes, and he has a bachelor's degree in medical lab a science to see whether he's eligible to enroll in the course. I'm not sure what course he's referring to. I'm assuming since he has a bachelor's degree to already, I'm assuming he's referring to the master's from psychology course. Uh, we would need to see uh, what the person, of course, can apply. Uh, we have, of course, persons who are not you in various university courses uh, throughout the university in all, all the courses, I would say, in all the faculty. So, uh, if we see that you do have, have you have covered some pharmacology um in uh in your course and as 
per standard, all admissions, if it's a degree from another country, this passes through the accreditation center here in Malta, we get the equivalence, and if you consider it to be eligible to NEU, um, then yes, you will be eligible to, to join the course, if we do have some pharmacology. So being from a third country, non-EU does not preclude anyone from joining any university course at the University of Malta. Am I correct, Professor Fennec? Yes, you're perfectly correct. So, so my recommendation would be apply, uh, let the application go through its channels. So, so uh, um, if, if your qualifications are from a non-EU country, there are special uh, channels and, and committees which application will go through and, uh, and you will get feedback. But being from a non-EU country doesn't mean you can't apply. We have students at university from all around the globe. Mm -hmm. EU and non-EU, okay? okay? So, um, uh, from the information provider, we, I mean, we really can't just provide say yes or no, because there are um, uh, special committees at university which actually look into these applications. But my suggestion is apply, let the application go through, and, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get feedback, okay? I mean... Uh, we have... We have another question. Uh, does the MSc in pharmacotoxicology involve any form of lab work, please? So the thought component, with, as part of the thought component, we do go over, and this is coordinated by Dr. Vanessa Petroni, uh, various aspects of molecular pharmacotoxicology. In fact, what Dr. Vanessa Petroni would like to answer this question. Vanessa. Uh, hi, I'm pleased to meet you all. Um, yes, yeah, so basically during um, as such as lab work, um, I mean, it, an introductory version of it is given during the first year of the MSc Pharmacotoxicology, where we'll cover mostly in vitro lab work. We will also mention in vivo lab work, and um, I, I do actually mention some of it myself. However, my colleagues will go into further depth. I believe um, with uh, Dr. Melissa Formosa. Um, uh, however, if obviously you like the, uh, the subject, you can then decide to continue your MSc studies in, uh, um, with regards to your dissertation in lab work. So currently, um, uh, something which obviously due to the limit of time, we cannot really go into the detail of um, the pharmacology department, clinical pharmacology and therapeutics department um, is also um, very um, invested in research. Um, I myself am a, um, an investigator in oncology, in lung cancer, um, uh, in lung cancer. We have a research group on lung cancer. Um, and uh, Professor Antine Fenech does research on uh, asthma and um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, uh, Professor Mifsut on um, epilepsy. Um, um, Professor Cordina on um, um, uh, health, um, uh, health um, safety, as as is uh, Dr. Dorna West also uh, with regards to medicine wastage. Um, uh, so it's uh, very important to also consider the fact that um, uh, although we are also, um, we will also be um, uh, paving the pathway towards um, research uh, uh, with, uh, well, in my interest, lab work, um, uh, we will also um, uh, be uh, paving the pathway towards your research careers in Malta. Um, if you want to start off a career in research, it is, um, it is also um, an opportunity which you can uh, um, exhaust. Um, I myself started off as a postdoctoral researcher before I became an, acad an academic. So um, it is very much a uh, possibility here in Malta also because I know research isn't um, advertised that much um, when you are doing your um, A-levels. So you can actually um, do PhD, you can actually carry out a PhD with our department as Professor Fennec um, mentioned, and this will also have level work and um, you can then continue um, re doing research um, here in Malta. We also work in collaboration with several labs abroad um, with France, Canada and Australia so um, we are constantly doing innovative um, research in various fields as I mentioned. Um, with regards to the pharmacotoxicology, yes we do carry out lab work with regards to the thought work and um, we do a sort of introduction. However, if you then like the subject, you can continue your dissertation 
um, either with uh, um, uh, my team or with Anthony's, with Professor Fennec teams, um, or with um, Dr. Um, Formosa, all of whom do lab work. Um, so yes, basically it's, it's up to you whether you would want to continue to um, study lab work um, in vitro studies or not. Yes, thank you very much. Um, just to add one small thing. In fact, um, uh, because of the collaborative nature from toxicology, we do have uh, our students, as Melina mentioned, have already started working on their thesis. We have a student who's working, in fact, with the Department of Biology on toxic plants. And we also have another student who's working with the Department of Chemistry, uh, developing analytical methods for the detection of drugs of abuse. So it's very the interdisciplinary pharmacotoxicology. And do, we do work very closely with other, um, with other uh, departments as well. There's another question I can see. Does the degree include on uh, an Erasmus experience? And as Professor Fedek answered, in fact, yes, we're working on establishing Erasmus agreements, which of course have been hindered time wise to COVID. But as in fact Vanessa mentioned, we are definitely have, uh, if not a Erasmus agreements, we have a lot of formal agreements. Several of our students do spend some time abroad and we're working now closely as well with our international office at the university to establish more Erasmus agreements. I'm not sure if there are any, I'm not sure if there are any comments. We've been uh, nearly an hour now. Professor Fennec, I'm not sure whether um, if there are any Q&As left to answer or perhaps whether we can conclude in the interests of time. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, thanks, Professor Rosut. Um, I can't see any more Q&As from my end. However, um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please simply send an email to the uh, departmental email address. It's on the website. It's pharmacology.ms at umedwmt. And uh, we'll answer it within the day. I mean, uh, so, or else send it directly. If it's due to the, if it's related to the BSc course, you can send it directly to me, anthony.fennec at umedwmt. You'll find that on the website as well. Or if it's related to the master's in pharmacotoxicology, uh, you can send it directly to, to Professor Mifsud. Okay, she, her email is Janet dot the suit at umedwmt you'll find um, it sorry sorry no, okay. yes, uh, in addition to this, if you are interested in research, um, which obviously the course, the BSc Pharmacology course, will um, uh, help you progress your career in the in the research um, arena, um, we are shortly going to, um, in the very near future, going to um, start off a uh, um, Facebook page with uh, all the oncological research that the department is doing. Um, and this will be linked with the main university page. Um, so if you follow the university page on Facebook, you would be able to um, know basically what research we are currently doing with regards to oncology in this department. Sorry, I interrupted Anthony. No, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Thanks for bringing it up. So I would like to formally draw this webinar to a close. We've been um, an hour practically. I would like to thank all the interventions. Uh, Mr. Campbell for, for so kindly being with us all the way from from London this evening, um, all our, our colleagues in the department, uh, we all call it, all ourselves our first name, even the students call us by our first name. So Anthony, Maria, Lorna, uh, Vanessa, Mark, and our students, Maya, Melina, and Emily, who um, had to leave, and of course from myself, I wish you all the very best. We're here for any queries there may be after today's webinar, so please don't hesitate to contact us again. I repeat, my email address is janet.mifsud at um.edu.mt and Professor Fennec is anthony.fennec at um.edu.mt. And I assure you, I will answer my emails near practically immediately, as my colleagues know. Professor Fennec may take a bit longer, but I assure you, it will be definitely answered sooner rather than later. Okay, I wish you all a nice evening, a good weekend, and a restful and peaceful summer. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Good evening. Bye.